Chapter 1 The Solar System Do you see stars in the sky at night? Our sun is also a star. It looks bigger and brighter because it is the nearest star to the earth. Still, it is millions of kilometers away from the earth. Let's know about the sun and its family. Solar System The sun and its family form the solar system. The family of the sun consists of the eight planets, the satellites of these planets and pieces of rock and dust. The sun is a huge ball of hot gases. It is the only body in the solar system with its own heat and light. The eight planets of the solar system are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. We can easily learn the order of the planets from the sun using a sentence My very educated mother just said us no. The first letter of every word stands for a planet name. Stars Stars are balls of hot burning gases with heat and light of their own. Sirius is the brightest star that we see in the night sky. But it looks smaller than the sun because it is much farther away from the earth. It is also known as the dog star. Sirius is 20 times brighter than the sun. A group of stars which appears to form a pattern in the sky is called a constellation. For example, Saptarishi. Planets All the planets move around the sun. The planets have no light of their own. They get heat and light from the sun. Jupiter is the largest while Mercury is the smallest planet of the solar system. Saturn has beautiful rings around it. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun while Neptune is the farthest one. Earth is the third planet from the sun. It is the only planet where plants, animals and human beings live. There are also some very small planets in the solar system called dwarf planets. Do you know? Until 2006, Pluto was considered the ninth planet of the solar system. But on 24th August 2006, Pluto was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Satellites Satellites are the heavenly bodies that revolve around a planet. The Earth has only one natural satellite, the Moon. It is the fifth largest satellite in the solar system. It has no light of its own. However, it appears bright because of the sunlight reflected from its surface. The planet Jupiter has the most number of satellites. Some man-made objects also revolve around the Earth. They are called artificial satellites. They help in communication, weather forecasting and navigation of ships and aircrafts. Aryabhat and Insat 1A are some artificial satellites of India. Chapter 2 our Earth. You already know that our Earth is a planet, but it is different from other planets in certain ways. It is the only planet on which life exists. Let us know more about it. Earth. A unique planet. Earth is the only planet in the solar system known to have air and water. It is due to the presence of air and water that life exists here. It is the third planet from the sun. Three quarters of the Earth's surface is covered with water and one quarter of it is covered with land. It gets just the right amount of heat and light from the sun to sustain life. Any closer to the sun would make the Earth too hot and any farther would make it too cold. Earth's atmosphere Earth is covered by a layer of gases, nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide, water vapor and dust particles. This layer is called the atmosphere. 
The atmosphere protects us from the sun's harmful rays. We would not live if there were no oxygen to breathe in. Shape of the Earth Long, long ago, people believed that the Earth was flat. They thought that they would fall off if they went too far in the same direction. Ferdinand Magellan was the first to prove that the Earth is round. In 1522, he and his sailors sailed from Spain on a long voyage on the ship Victoria. The ship sailed all the way around the world and reached the same point from where it had started. This clearly proved that the earth is round like a ball. The pictures of the earth taken by the astronauts from the space also prove that the earth is round. Though the earth looks like a ball, it is more like an orange, slightly flattened at the top and bottom. The top and bottom of the earth are called poles. The north pole at the top and the south pole at the bottom. The horizon and the coast. Looking from a distance, the land and sky seem to meet. But in reality, they do not meet. The place at which the land and sky appear to meet is called the horizon. But when we move closer to the horizon, it seems to move further away. Land and sea meet at the coast. If we stand on the coast and face the sea, it seems as if the water and the sky are meeting at a distance. However, this is not so. Land and Water the surface of the earth consists of large land masses and huge water bodies. The large land masses are called continents and the huge water bodies are called oceans. There are seven continents and five oceans in the world. Continents The seven continents from biggest to smallest in size are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Antarctica, Europe and Australia. Asia is the largest continent while Australia is the smallest one. Continents are further divided into smaller parts called countries. Do you know India is a part of the continent of Asia? Oceans. The five oceans are Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Southern Ocean, and Arctic Ocean. The Pacific Ocean is the largest, while the Arctic Ocean is the smallest ocean. Other Water Bodies Seas are also large bodies of water, but they are smaller than oceans. Some of the important seas are the Mediterranean Sea, the Arabian Sea, and the Baltic Sea. Rivers, lakes, and ponds are some other smaller water bodies. Chapter 3 Globes and Maps The Earth is very huge in size. It is so huge that we can see only a very small part of it from one point. We have globes and maps to see the different parts of the Earth at one time. Globes and Maps a globe is the exact model of the earth. We can rotate it to see different places. However, a globe is not big enough to show all the places in detail. To overcome this problem, we have drawings of a part of the earth or the whole of it on a flat surface. Such drawings are called maps. A map can be big or small. We can hang a big map on a wall. We call it a wall map. An atlas is a book of maps. Atlases are now available in multimedia format also. There are two types of maps. Physical map. It shows mountains, rivers and plains. Political map. It shows the states and cities of a country. It also shows the boundaries of different neighboring countries. Directions on a map. There are four main directions. They are north, south, east and west. If you stand facing a map, 
the top part of the map is north, the bottom is south, to your right is east, and to your left is west. Directions are also marked on the map. They help us in locating places on the map. An instrument called compass helps us find the directions. It has a needle which always points to the north. When we know where north lies, we can find out the other three directions. Oceans and Continents In the given map, you will find that some areas in the map are shaded blue while others are shaded brown. The blue areas show water bodies or oceans and the brown areas show land masses or continents. Chapter 4 Air Around Us Air is all around us. We cannot see it, though we can feel it. Air occupies space and has weight. Air also exerts pressure. A thick layer of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere. The atmosphere consists of gases like nitrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide, as well as water vapor and dust particles. Nitrogen gas is 78% in atmosphere. Importance of air We all need air to breathe. We cannot live without air. Animals also need air to breathe. Plants need air to make their food. If there were no air, there would be no life on the earth. Air pollution We should breathe clean air. If we breathe in dirty air, it can create health problems for us. Other living things also need clean air. We use the term air pollution to describe the condition of air when it gets mixed with unwanted gases, dust, etc. and becomes dirty and polluted. What makes air dirty and polluted? Cars, buses and trucks give out smoke that mixes with the air and makes it polluted. Some harmful gases released by large factories also mix with the air and make it dirty. Bursting of firecrackers, burning of wood and dumping of garbage in the open also makes the air dirty and unhygienic. How to keep the air clean? Breathing in polluted air can make us sick. Therefore, it is important to keep the air clean. We should do the following things to keep the air clean. Plants and trees make air pure and fresh. So, we should plant more trees. The oxygen that we breathe in comes from plants and trees. Their green leaves produce oxygen while making their food. If we cut down trees, there would not be enough oxygen for us to breathe. We should keep a check on the smoke that is released from vehicles and factories. This can be done by using chimneys in the factories, CNG gas in vehicles, etc. We must avoid burning twigs, dry leaves and man-made materials. We should not throw garbage on the road. Instead, we should throw it in covered dustbins. We must cover our mouth and nose with a handkerchief while coughing and sneezing so that germs do not spread into the air. We should avoid lighting firecrackers. They cause noise pollution besides polluting the air. Chapter 5 Water – Life-Giving Liquid You know that air and water make life possible on the earth. You have already studied about air in the previous chapters. Let's study about water now. Uses of water Water is a colorless and tasteless liquid. Humans, animals and plants cannot live without water. It is essential for the survival of all living beings. We need water mainly for drinking. However, it has various other uses like washing, bathing, cooking and cleaning. Plants and animals too need water to live and grow. Plants need water to prepare their food. Fish and many other animals live in water. Water is used by farmers to grow crops. Water is also used in factories to make goods like paper and rubber. 
Water is also used for transportation. Boats, rafts and ships carry people and goods from one place to another in rivers, seas and oceans. Water is also used to generate electricity. It is called hydroelectricity. Sources of water We get water from wells, tanks and natural water bodies like ponds, lakes and rivers in villages. We also use hand pumps and tube wells to get water from deep below the ground. We cannot use the water of seas and oceans because it is salty. In cities, water is first purified and stored in big tanks. Then, it reaches our homes through pipes and taps. Do you know, water freezes at 0 degrees Celsius and boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Rain and ice caps are the main sources of fresh water on the earth. Ice caps and glaciers are found on high altitudes. Glaciers store about 70% of the world's fresh water. In areas where fresh water is scarce, rainwater is collected and used for drinking. Water from rivers, ponds and lakes is not fit for drinking. Various methods like boiling, using water filters and water purifiers are used to purify water. These help to kill all possible germs present in water. Water passes through various purification processes before it is supplied to us for use at home. Do you know, the world's largest freshwater lake is Lake Baikal in Russia. Forms of Water Water exists in three forms, solid, ice, liquid, water and gas, vapor. At normal temperature, water remains in liquid form. It is tasteless, colorless and odorless. Ice is frozen water. When water is heated, it changes into water vapor. Observe a glass filled with boiling water. You will see water vapor rising. On the other hand, if you place your hand over a hot cup of tea, you have small drops of water on your palm. Water vapor changes into water on cooling. Water cycle Wet clothes dry faster when placed directly in the sunlight. Do you know why? Where does the water in them go? Actually, the water in the clothes changes into vapor and mixes with the air due to the heat of the sun. Similarly, water from oceans, rivers, lakes and other water bodies changes into vapor because of the heat of the sun. This is called evaporation. This water vapor keeps rising in the sky. High in the sky, water vapor cools down and changes to water droplets. This is called condensation. These water droplets combine together and form clouds. When these clouds become too heavy with drops of water, they fall to the ground as rain. This is called precipitation. This rain water gets collected in lakes, ponds, rivers, seas and oceans and also under the ground. This water again evaporates due to the sun's heat. This process keeps on repeating itself and is known as the water cycle. Water shortage Water is very important for the existence of life on the earth. In many villages, people walk miles to get water for daily use. Shortage of water can also lead to droughts. Hence, we should avoid wasting water while brushing, bathing, washing clothes, cleaning cars, watering plants, and doing other jobs which require water. Every drop of water stored is every drop of water saved which can be used later. Chapter 6 Our Country We live in India. It is our country. It is the seventh largest country in the world in terms of area. It is divided into 29 states and 7 union territories. New Delhi is the capital of our country. National Symbols National symbols represent our country. The flag, anthem and emblem are some of our national symbols. Besides these, we also have the national animal, the national bird, the national flower and the national song. These symbols make us feel proud to be Indians. Let us study about our national symbols.
National flag. Tricolor is the name of our national flag. It is called Tiranga in Hindi. It is divided into three equal parts deep saffron on the top, white in the middle, and dark green at the bottom. At the center of the white band, there is a navy blue wheel with 24 spokes. This wheel is called the Ashok Chakra. Do you know? It is believed that the national flag of India was first hoisted in 1906 in Kolkata. National Anthem Jana Gana Man is our national anthem. It was written by Rabindranath Tagore. We sing it on the Republic Day, the Independence Day and other important occasions. National Song The national song of India is Vande Mataram. It was composed by Bankim Chandra Chatterjee. National Emblem Lion Capital is our national emblem. It has been adopted from the Ashoka Pillar at Sarnath near Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh. It has four lions facing four directions. They symbolize power, courage and confidence. There is a Dharma Chakra below the lions. To the right of this chakra is a bull and to the left is a horse. The words Satya Meva Jayate, Truth Only Triumphs are written below the emblem in Devanagari script. Other National Symbols National Flower, Lotus National Bird, Peacock National River, Ganga National Animal, Royal Bengal Tiger National Game, Hockey National Tree, Banyan Tree Landforms of India Mountains Big highlands that have pointed tips are called mountains. We have the great Himalayan mountain range in the north. This range has some of the highest mountains in the world. The peaks of most of the Himalayan mountains remain covered with snow throughout the year. Mount Everest, the highest mountain peak in the world, is also a part of the Himalayas. Its height is 8848 meters. Many rivers like the Ganga and the Brahmaputra originate in the Himalayas. Northern Plains Flat or level land stretches from west to east in northern India. These are called the Northern Plains of India. They lie to the south of the Himalayas. This area is also known as the Gangetic Plain. Many rivers like the Ganga, Yamuna, Ravi, Satluj, etc. flow through these plains. These rivers make the plains fertile. Many types of crops are grown here. Plateau A large area of flat land that is higher than the land around is called a plateau. The southern part of the India is a plateau called the Southern Plateau. The Southern Plateau covers the largest part of our country. The land in the Southern Plateau is rocky and hard. The area is less fertile than the plains. Desert A desert is a very large area of land having very little water and very few plants growing on it. In the northwestern part of India is the Indian Desert or the Thar Desert. The people here lead a tough life. It is very hot and dry in the daytime during summer. However, the nights are quite pleasant and cool. In winters, the days are warm and the nights are chilly. It rains little in the desert areas. There are very few plants and trees which grow here. Peninsula The land surrounded by water on three sides is called a peninsula. The Indian Peninsula has the Arabian Sea on the western side, the Bay of Bengal on the eastern side and the Indian Ocean on the southern side. Island The land surrounded by water on all sides is called an island. There are many islands in the water bodies around India. 
Some of these islands are a part of India. One group of islands is in the Bay of Bengal. These are called the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Lakshadweep Islands is another group of islands in the Arabian Sea. Chapter 7 States and Union Territories India is a very big country. It is located in Asia, the largest continent. In this chapter, you will study about the states and union territories of India. India stretches from Jammu and Kashmir in the north to Kanyakumari in the south and Gujarat in the west to Arunachal Pradesh in the east. It is the second most populous country in the world after China. Political Division the entire nation and its population of over 120 crore people is looked after by the central government or the union government. But it is very difficult for the central government to look after the whole country by itself. So, India has been divided into smaller parts called states and union territories. Our country has 29 states and 7 union territories that include the National Capital Territory of Delhi. Each state has a capital city and is ruled by its own state government. Union territories also have their separate capitals but these are directly under the control of the central government. New Delhi is the capital of India. It is located in North India and lies in the National Capital Territory of Delhi. The central government works from New Delhi. The President of India is the head of the country. The Prime Minister and his Council of Ministers at the central government look after the safety and welfare of the people. The offices of all these ministers and leaders are in the Parliament House at New Delhi. States and their capitals Northern States States Capital Jammu and Kashmir Srinagar Himachal Pradesh Shimla Punjab Chandigarh Haryana Chandigarh, Uttarakhand, Dehradun, Uttar Pradesh, Lucknow, Eastern States, States, Capital, Bihar, Patna, Odisha, Bhubaneswar, West Bengal, Kolkata, Sikkim, Gangtok, Arunachal Pradesh, Itanagar, Assam, Dispur, Nagaland, Kohima, Meghalaya, Shillong, Manipur, Imphal, Mizoram, Azol, Tripura, Agartala, Southern States, States, Capital, Andhra Pradesh, Hyderabad, Karnataka, Bengaluru, Tamil Nadu, Chennai, Kerala, Tiruvananthapuram, Telangana, Hyderabad. Central States, States, Capital, Madhya Pradesh, Bhopal, Chhattisgarh, Raipur, Jharkhand, Ranchi. Do you know? On 2nd June 2014, Telangana became the 29th state of India. Western States States Capital Rajasthan Jaipur Gujarat Gandhinagar Maharashtra Mumbai Goa Panaji Union Territories Union Territory, Capital 
Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Port Blair, Lakshadweep, Kavaratti, Puducherry, Puducherry, Daman and Diu, Daman, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Silvasa, Chandigarh, Chandigarh, Delhi, New Delhi. Chapter 8 Major Cities of India There are many small and big cities in India. In this chapter, you will study about some of the major Indian cities. Mumbai Mumbai was earlier known as Bombay, a name given by the British. It is one of the most important cities of India. The name Mumbai is derived from two Marathi words, Mumba meaning goddess and I meaning mother. It is located on the west coast of India facing the Arabian Sea. Mumbai is the capital of Maharashtra. Mumbai is also referred to as the financial capital of India. Marathi is the main language spoken here. Originally, Mumbai was a cluster of seven separate islands. The southernmost island was called the Old Woman's Island. Now, these islands are connected to each other to form the main city. The climate of Mumbai is greatly influenced by the Arabian Sea. It experiences winter from December to February and summer from March to June. From June to September, the city experiences rainy season. There are some beautiful beaches in Mumbai. The most famous of these are the Juhu Chopati and the Girgaum Chopati. Some of the important landmarks of Mumbai are the Gateway of India, the Marine Drive, the Haji Ali Dargah, the SL World, the Nehru Planetarium, the National Science Center, the Prince of Wales Museum, the Hanging Gardens, the Shoe House, the Taraporwala Aquarium, the Jahangir Art Gallery, and the Victoria Terminus or the Chhatrapati Shivaji Terminus. The Elephanta Caves lying to the east of Mumbai are known for their beautiful stone carvings. Though the people of Mumbai celebrate all the major festivals of India, the Ganesh Chaturthi is the most famous festival of Mumbai. Mumbai also has the busiest seaport in India. The city has several industries like textiles, medicines, electronic goods and chemicals. It is also the centre of Hindi and Marathi film industries. It is known as Bollywood. The governor, chief minister and other ministers of Maharashtra live in Mumbai. Mumbai also has the headquarters of several important offices. The headquarters of Central West Railways is located in Mumbai. The Bhabha Atomic Research Centre, BARC, which is the first atomic power plant of India, is situated at Trombe near Mumbai. Some distance away from Mumbai is the Mumbai High, formerly known as the Bombay High, which is an offshore oil field. Chennai Chennai is an important city of India located on the southeastern coast. Formerly, it was called Madras. Chennai is the capital of Tamil Nadu. Tamil is the main language of the people. The name Chennai comes from a Telugu word, Chennapatnam. The city is an important seaport on the east coast facing the Bay of Bengal. Chennai has hot and humid climate for most part of the year. The hottest period is from May to June. January is the coolest month. The city gets most of its rainfall from October to December. Sometimes, the city also faces the threat of cyclones. 
There are various places of tourist interest in Chennai like Fort St. George, the Chennai Museum, the Gandhi Mandapam, the Snake Park and St. Thomas Church. The Marina Beach, the second longest beach in the world and the longest one in India, is also located in Chennai. Kolkata Kolkata was formerly called Calcutta. It is located in the eastern part of India. The name Kolkata comes from Kalikata, one of the three villages on which the city was formed. Kolkata is situated on the bank of the river Hooghly. Kolkata is the capital of West Bengal. It was the capital of India during the British rule till 1911. The main language of the people here is Bengali. The climate of Kolkata is wet and dry. Summers are hot and humid with May and June being the hottest months. December and January are the coldest months. Rainfall occurs from June to September. During early summer, Kolkata witnesses spells of thunderstorms with heavy rain. This rain is locally known as Kal Baisakhi. Kolkata has an important port called the Diamond Harbour. Ships carry goods to and from here to other countries. The Havra Bridge on the River Hooghly is one of the most famous bridges in India. It is the world's busiest bridge. Another new bridge called Vidya Sagar Setu has also been built on the River Hooghly. Some important tourist attractions of Kolkata include the Botanical Garden, the Indian Museum, the Alipur Zoo, the Birla Planetarium, the Ramakrishna Mission at Belur Mat, the famous Cricket Stadium Eden Garden, the Salt Lake Stadium and the Science City. Kolkata has many famous buildings of British times like the Fort William and the Victoria Memorial. Victoria Memorial is famous for its statues and paintings. Kolkata is the only city of India to have a tram network which runs through the city. It was also the first city to have an underground railway system called the Metro. The Governor, Chief Minister and the other ministers of West Bengal live in Kolkata. The main industry of Kolkata is jute processing. The other industries are textiles, vehicles, rice, paper, chemicals, electrical goods, iron and steel and leather. Kolkata is an important center of education as well. Delhi Delhi is one of the major cities of India. It is situated on the banks of River Yamuna. It is divided into two parts, Old Delhi and New Delhi. New Delhi is the capital of India. Delhi was first built by the Pandava rulers and was called Indraprastha. Ever since, it has been built, destroyed and rebuilt time and again. Delhi has a long and extremely hot summer from April to October. Hot winds called Lu blow here in summers. Rainfall starts from the month of June. Winter starts from November and lasts till March. Since Delhi is the capital city of India, there are many important offices located in Delhi. The Parliament of India, the Supreme Court of India and several other offices are located in Delhi. The President, the Prime Minister and other ministers of the central government live here. Ambassadors and dignitaries from other countries of the world also live in New Delhi. Delhi also has a network of city railway system known as the Metro. Some important tourist places Located in Delhi include the India Gate, which is a memorial built in the honour of the brave soldiers who sacrificed their lives for the country, the Red Fort, the Kutub Minar, the Old Fort, 
the Humayu's tomb, the Jama Masjid, Jantar Mantar, the Nehru Planetarium, the Lotus Temple, the Dolls Museum, the Lodi Garden, and the Zoological Garden. Bengaluru Bengaluru, formerly known as Bangalore, is the capital of Karnataka. Located towards the south of India, Bengaluru is also known as the Silicon Valley of India. This is because the city has many computer-related industries. Bengaluru is also known as the city of gardens because of its beautiful parks. Bengaluru has a moderate climate throughout the year. January is the coolest month and April is the hottest month. Bengaluru receives heavy rainfall during the months of August, September and October. Important places of tourist attraction in Bengaluru are the Tipu Sultan's Fort, the Lal Bagh, the Bull Temple, the Kabon Park, the Vidhan Saudha and the Bal Bhavan. Hyderabad Hyderabad is the joint capital of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. It is situated on the southern bank of River Musi. It is also known as the City of Pearls because of its famous pearl jewellery. There are many famous structures in Hyderabad like the Char Minar, the Makka Masjid, the Golconda Fort, the Falaknuma Palace, the Hussein Sagar Lake, the Salar Jung Museum and the Hyderabad Botanical Gardens. The Char Minar was built by Muhammad Kuli Qutub Shah in 1591. Chapter 9 Culture of India India is inhabited by people of different religions. People living in different parts of our country speak different languages and eat different kinds of food. They also have different kinds of music and dance. Thus, India has a rich and diverse culture. Let's study more about the culture of our country. Languages A wide variety of languages are spoken in India. In the north, people speak Kashmiri, Dongri, Pahadi, Punjabi, Urdu and Hindi. In the eastern part of India, people speak Bengali, Manipuri, Assamese, Bodo, Uriya, Nepali, Hindi and English. In the western region, people speak Marathi, Gujarati, Marwari, Sindhi and Konkani. The people in the southern states speak Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam and Kannad. Most of these languages are the official languages of our country. Though Devanagari script is used to write most of these languages, there are many other specific scripts like Gurumukhi, Bengali, Uriya, Kannad, Tamil and Malayalam. Dance India also has various dance forms. The Indian classical dance is often regarded as a means of worship. Earlier, these dances were performed on special occasions, but now they are performed on stage. These dances have their origin in different regions. Bharatnatyam, Kuchipudi, Mohiniyattam and Kathakali are dance forms belonging to the southern part of India. Odissi and Manipuri belong to the eastern part, while Kathak has its origin in the northern part of India. Bharatnatyam originated from Tamil Nadu. It is one of the oldest dance forms of India. Some of the famous Bharatnatyam dancers include Padma Subramaniam, Mrinalini Sarabhai and Rukmini Devi Arundale. Kathak is another important classical dance form of India. The famous Kathak dancers include Pandit Birju Maharaj and Shobna Narayan. Odissi is a famous dance form of Eastern India. Guru Keluchan Mohapatra was a great exponent of Odissi dance. Some other great Odissi dancers include 
गुरु पंकज चरण दास संयुक्ता पानीग्रही कुमकुम मोहंती गुरु गंगाधर एंड सोनल मानसिंह म्यूजिक द क्लासिकल इंडियन म्यूजिक हैज टू फॉर्म्स द हिंदुस्तानी म्यूजिक ऑफ नॉर्थ इंडिया and the carnatic music of south india musical instruments many kinds of musical instruments have been developed by indians the most commonly used instruments for hindustani style of music are tanpura sitar harmonium veena santoor tabla dholak sarangi and flute In the Carnatic style of music the instruments include violin veena nadaswaram mridangam tambourine and ghatam do you know ms subbulakshmi was a famous singer of carnatic music chapter 10 food we eat like air and water food is also very important for us we cannot live without food food helps us to grow it gives us energy to work and play it also keeps us healthy and active food habits you know that india is a vast country it has different types of climate in different parts so different varieties of crops are also grown here on the basis of the food habits people are classified into vegetarians and non-vegetarians non-vegetarians eat egg fish and meat people who do not eat these food items are called vegetarians food grains wheat is the major crop of northern states in the western part of india ragi bajra jowar and maize are grown along with wheat The people of the eastern and southern parts of India grow rice. Pulses or dals like gram, black gram, green gram and kidney beans are grown all across the country. Fruits and vegetables. Along with food grains, fruits and vegetables are also an important part of our diet. Different kinds of fruits and vegetables are grown in different parts of India. Place fruits grown jammu and kashmir apple cherries strawberries maharashtra oranges and mangoes uttar pradesh mangoes and guavas kerala and tamil nadu coconut gujarat papayas and bananas assam goa and kerala pineapples ladakh apricots Besides fruits vegetables are also grown region wise though they are grown seasonally certain vegetables like lady's finger bottle gourd and bitter gourd are available only during summers vegetables like cauliflower peas carrots and leafy greens like spinach fenugreek and mustard are available only during winter do you know Nasik in Maharashtra is the biggest wholesale market of onion in India. Spices and cooking oils. We add spices to our food to give it flavor, color and taste. Some of the commonly used Indian spices are cardamom, cloves, cinnamon, black pepper, ginger, turmeric, garlic, coriander. and cumin seeds majority of these spices are produced in kerala and other southern states edible oils are used to cook food different oils are used in different states of india mustard oil groundnut oil coconut oil sesame oil and clarified butter form the basis of indian cooking do you know Kerala is also called the spice garden of India. Special food items. Special food items of various states are sarso ka saag, makke ki roti and lassi from Punjab, dhokla and thepla from Gujarat. 
Rajma, Rogan Josh, Yakhne and Gushtaba from Jammu and Kashmir. Dal Bati Churma from Rajasthan. Puran Poli, Mahel Puri, Pao Bhaji and Vada Pao from Maharashtra. Idli, Dosa, Sambhar, Vada and Upma from the southern states of India. India is also famous for different types of sweets. Barfi, Gajar ka halwa and Gulab Jamun are sweets of North India. Rasagulla and Sandesh are made in the East, particularly in West Bengal. Srikhand and Amras are sweets from the Western part of India. Chapter 11 Clothes We Wear We need clothes to cover our body. Clothes protect us from heat, cold and rain. People living in different climatic regions wear different types of clothes. Climate differs from place to place in India. For example, the northern states are very hot in summer and very cold in winter. Therefore, People in this region wear light cotton clothes in summer and warm woolens in winter. In the cities located in South India like Chennai and Bengaluru, people wear the same kind of clothes throughout the year since the weather remains almost the same. Men and women in India have distinct styles of dressing. Traditional dresses for men include kurta pajama and dhoti while women dress up in salwar kameez Sari and Ghagra Choli. Men sometimes tie a long piece of cloth on their head as a turban or cap. Traditional dresses of men and women in India. States, men, women. Assam, Dhoti Kurta, Mekhla Chadar. Haryana, Dhoti Kurta, Pajama, Ghagra, Kurta Odhni, Kamri. Kashmir, fur caps, firan salwar, patani suit, firan salwar, Maharashtra, dhoti kurta with turban or nehru cap, sari blouse, pentni sari, navaddi sari, Nagaland, lotha naga shawl, sunkotepsu, kamfi kind of a shawl, jewelry of colored bamboo, Punjab, pagdi or turban, lungi, kurta pajama, embroidered jacket, salwar kameez, dupatta, Tamil Nadu, veshti shirt, thundu, sari blouse, West Bengal, dhoti kurta, baluchari, kantha, tant saris. People also wear different traditional dresses in different regions. During festivals and special occasions, people dress up traditionally. Women wear a lot of jewelry and colorful garments. Indians also like to wear western clothes. Men wear blazers, shirts, trousers, jackets, t-shirts, jeans and ties. Women wear jeans, trousers, skirts, tops, scarves and stoles. Do you know? Women living in different parts of India wear sari in different styles. Chapter 12 Our Festivals Festivals are occasions for fun, joy and celebration. People wear special clothes and eat special food. In India, we celebrate many festivals throughout the year. Let us study about some important festivals of India. You know about national festivals. Apart from these, we also celebrate many other festivals such as the Shehra, Diwali, Christmas, Eid, Holi, Buddha Purnima, Gurpurab, Pongal, Onam, Bihu and Basant Panchami. The Shehra The Shehra is celebrated to mark Lord Rama's victory over Ravana. It is celebrated for a period of 10 days. During this period, Ram Leela, the story of Lord Rama, 
is enacted in different parts of the country. On the tenth day, the effigies of Ravana, his son Meghnath, and his brother Kumbhakaran are burnt. In West Bengal, the Shehra is celebrated as Durga Puja. During this period, people worship idols of Goddess Durga. Do you know, the Shehra of Kullu is famous all over the country. Diwali Diwali is the festival of lights. People celebrate it by decorating their houses with lights, clay lamps called diyas and candles. Colorful rangoli is made at the entrance of houses. Children and elders light firecrackers. Diwali marks Lord Rama's return to Ayodhya after an exile of 14 years. It also marks the beginning of the winter season in North India. Eid Eid is celebrated by Muslims. It is celebrated after a month-long fast called Ramzan. People greet each other saying Eid Mubarak. They wear new clothes and prepare a special sweet dish called Sewai on this occasion. Holi Holi is the festival of colors. It falls in the month of March. It marks the end of winter. Also during this time, several crops such as wheat, gram and mustard are ready for harvest. People apply colors on each other. They enjoy a sweet snack called gujia on this occasion. Christmas Christmas is celebrated on 25th December every year. It marks the birthday of Jesus Christ. People go to the church to offer prayers. They decorate Christmas trees and exchange gifts. Cakes and puddings are made on this day. People wear new clothes and wish each other Merry Christmas. Pongal and Onam Cutting and gathering of crops is called harvesting. This occasion is celebrated as Harvest Festival. Pongal and Onam are two important harvest festivals celebrated in southern part of India. Pongal is celebrated in Tamil Nadu, while Onam is celebrated in Kerala. On the occasion of Pongal, people worship the cow and prepare rice with milk and jaggery. Boat races are a special attraction during Onam in Kerala. Guru Purab The Sikhs celebrate the birthdays of their gurus as Guru Purab. On this day, people go to the Gurudwara to offer prayers. Processions are taken out and langars are organized in various Gurudwaras where everyone eats together. Special Kada Prasad is prepared and distributed. Some other festivals. Basant Panchami is celebrated to mark the beginning of spring. Saraswati, the goddess of learning, is worshipped on this day. This festival marks the end of winter and the beginning of spring. The birthday of Gautam Buddha is celebrated as Buddha Purnima. Bihu, the harvest festival of Assam, is celebrated in the month of April. Chapter 13 Our Community Many other families also live in our neighborhood. We together make a community. People in a community help each other just like family members. Let us know about some important people of our community. Teacher A teacher teaches us to read and write and helps us to become responsible. We also learn music, sports, drawing and painting from our teachers. Shopkeeper We get all the things we need such as bread, butter, eggs, milk and many other things from the shopkeepers in our locality. Doctor When we feel unwell or sick, we go to a doctor. The doctor suggests us medicines to cure us. Postman A postman brings our letters and parcels. Tailor a tailor stitches our clothes according to our requirements. Sweeper A sweeper keeps the roads, parks and other places clean. Plumber A plumber looks after drainage systems, 
mends taps and seals leakages carpenter a carpenter makes furniture doors windows etc for us electrician an electrician fixes our lights fans wires and other electronic goods fireman we call a fireman when there is a fire firemen put out the fire and save our lives and property policeman a policeman maintains law and order in the community policemen work in a police station important places in a community there are many important places in our community let us know about some of them we go to a hospital when we are very sick the doctors and nurses take care of sick people and cure them with medicines there are schools and colleges in our community where we study fire stations in our community send out firemen and fire engines to put out a fire we go to the police station if there is a theft in our house or we have any other trouble there are many other important buildings like banks post office malls etc in our community chapter 14 occupations in villages and cities money is very important to lead a comfortable life we need money to buy the things we need we also need money to pay the school fee electricity bills and telephone bills have you ever wondered where this money comes from this money has to be earned and to earn money we need to work doing a work to earn money is called an occupation occupations you see people around you engaged in different types of occupations have you ever thought why people do different kinds of jobs people choose occupations according to their education skills and needs for example one requires specific education to become a doctor similarly one needs to have special skills to become a carpenter village occupations people do various kinds of work in villages to earn money farming is the main occupation of people in villages some other important occupations in villages include selling fruits and vegetables rearing animals for milk meat and eggs and fishing there are also barbers carpenters tailors shopkeepers etc in a village city occupations unlike villages cities have various kinds of occupations the various occupations available in the cities include working in factories and offices working in hospitals schools and colleges and selling goods and services some people also work in films some write books while some earn money by painting there are also yoga trainers special educators postmen and stage artists who enjoy their work as well as help us in many ways many people make a living out of playing their favorite sports like cricket tennis rugby basketball and football hobbies and occupations hobbies are certain activities which we enjoy in our spare time they are fun they help us to relax hobbies are of different types like music dance painting as well as sports like cricket football and tennis some people take up their hobbies as their occupations differences between hobby and occupation hobby occupation a hobby is an activity done for fun an occupation is a work done to earn money hobbies are practiced during spare time an occupation takes up most of our time during a day Th chapter 15 means of transport 
people need to travel from one place to another for different reasons. Goods also need to be transported from one place to another. For traveling and sending goods, we have various means of transport. We choose the means of transport according to our need. To travel short distances, we go on foot. While to travel long distances, we need to use various modes of transport like bus, train or aeroplane. Land Transport We generally travel on land. Rickshaws and bicycles are used to travel short distances. Cars, buses, scooters, taxis, auto rickshaws, motorbikes, jeeps and metro rail are used to cover long distances on land. Trains and long route buses are used to cover very long distances. In Delhi and Kolkata, people also travel by metro rail to transport or transfer goods from one place to another by road, we use trucks, tankers, containers and goods trains. The world's highest motorable road is at Khardungla in the Ladakh region of Jammu and Kashmir at 18,380 feet. Animals used for transport Man has been using animals for travelling and carrying goods for hundreds of years. Many animals are still used as a means of transport. Camels carry people and goods from one place to another in desert areas. So they are called the ship of the desert. Horses, elephants, mules, donkeys and ponies are also used for travel. Water transport there are many means of transport that move on the surface of water. Rafts, boats, steamers, ships and houseboats are some of the modes of transportation on water. Ships are used to carry people and goods over long distances. Air transport We travel by aeroplanes through air to cover long distances in a very short time. Aeroplanes and helicopters are the modes of travelling in air. Aeroplanes need an airport to land and take off. Helicopters are used specially to reach the places where constructing an airport is difficult. Air transport is a very expensive mode of travel. Helicopters can hover for extended period of time. So, they can be used for search and rescue and military operations. Do you know, the Wright brothers were the first to make an aeroplane. Chapter 16 Means of Communication Nowadays, many of our friends and family members live far away from us. We cannot meet them every now and then. Even in the same city, we cannot meet our relatives and friends every day. But there are various means of communication that help us to keep in touch with our near and dear ones. Let us know about different means of communication in this chapter. Long, long ago, when no language was invented, people used signs like hand movements to communicate with each other. Even smoke was used to communicate over long distances. People shared their feelings and experiences through paintings and drawings on the walls of caves. Personal Communication With the passage of time, people learned languages and began to write. Writing soon became an important form of communication. People started writing letters to their distant relatives and friends. Earlier, pigeons were used to send and receive letters. Then, messages were carried by messengers on foot or on horseback. These messengers were known as harkara. Today, we have fast and easy means of personal communication like the post, telephone, short message service 
और एस एम एस एंड ई मेल वी यूज पोस्टल सर्विसेस फॉर सेंडिंग लेटर्स पार्सल्स एंड मनी ऑर्डर्स पोस्ट ऑफिस प्रोवाइड अस विथ पोस्ट कार्ड्स इनलैंड लेटर्स एनवेलोप्स एंड स्टैम्प्स विच हेल्प अस इन कम्युनिकेटिंग विद अदर्स कोरियर सर्विसेस ऑफर अ फास्टर वे ऑफ सेंडिंग एंड रिसीविंग पार्सल्स लेटर्स एंड इम्पोर्टेंट पेपर्स डू यू नो एम्पर शेर शाह सूरी स्टार्टेड एन एफिशियंट पोस्टल सर्विस इन हिज एम्पायर अबाउट फोर हंड्रेड ईयर्स अगो टेलीफोन हैज बिकम द मोस्ट पॉप्यूलर मीन्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन इन आवर एज देर आर मेनी काइंड ऑफ टेलीफोन्स लाइक द लैंडलाइन एंड मोबाइल फोन अ लैंडलाइन फोन इज फिक्स एट वन प्लेस वाइल अ मोबाइल फोन कैन बी कैरीड एनी वेयर वी कैन ऑल्सो यूज मोबाइल फोन्स टू सेंड एस एम एस एस एंड ई मेल्स वी मेक कॉल्स टू पीपल लिविंग इन अदर स्टेट्स ऑफ आवर कंट्री बाई यूजिंग एस टी डी और सब्सक्राइबर्स ट्रंक डायलिंग कोड्स एंड दोज लिविंग इन अदर कंट्रीज बाई यूजिंग आई एस डी इंटरनेशनल सब्सक्राइबर्स डायलिंग कोड्स वी कैन ऑल्सो राइट लेटर्स ऑन द कम्प्यूटर एंड सेंड दम वाई आर ई मेल और इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मेल टू अदर्स मास कम्युनिकेशन मीन्स ऑफ मास कम्युनिकेशन हेल्प अस गेट इन टच विद अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ पीपल एट द सेम टाइम न्यूज पेपर्स मैगजीन्स रेडियो एंड टेलीविजन आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ मास कम्युनिकेशन थ्रू दीज वी आर एबल टू नो वट इज हैपनिंग इन द कंट्री एज वेल एज द रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड वी लिसन टू और वॉच एंटरटेनमेंट प्रोग्राम्स न्यूज स्पोर्ट्स एंड एजुकेशनल प्रोग्राम्स ऑन रेडियो एंड टेलीविजन इवन दोज who cannot read or write can listen to the radio or watch tv to know about the world artificial satellites also play an important role in communication through satellites we are able to view live telecasts of events happening all around the world we also have e readers today on which we can download books from the net for reading Various means of communication have brought us all closer. The world has become a smaller place and we can reach anyone living anywhere within a few minutes. Chapter 17 The Story of Early Man The people who lived on the earth thousands of years ago are known as the early men or early humans. They wandered here and there in search of food and shelter. They lived in caves and in trees. They covered their body with the skin of animals or leaves. They ate roots and fruits and flesh of animals. They ate everything raw. They did not know how to make fire. Discovery of fire. Whenever a forest fire occurred, the early humans got scared of it. they noticed that even animals were afraid of it the early humans took many years to learn about making fire one day while making stone tools someone rubbed two stones together which created a spark this helped him to start a fire this is how the early humans discovered fire the early humans used fire to cook food They also used fire to light their caves. They used fire to scare away animals. Discovery of farming. After the discovery of fire, early man started living in one place for some time. During this time, they saw that the seeds of fruits when thrown carelessly on the soil grew into new plants. They soon realized that plants could grow if seeds were thrown in the soil this was the beginning of farming they now collected the seeds of different plants and spread them on the ground after a while these plants grew and bore fruits or grains after some time the early humans realized 
that the use of water helped them grow more crops. So they started living near rivers, lakes and other water bodies. Thus, settlements started coming up near water bodies. Domestication of Animals After the discovery of farming, early humans began to live in one place so that they would take care of their crops. While living in one place, they realized that certain animals could be useful to them. They concluded that all animals should not be hunted for food. A few animals could provide them food while others could be used for things like carrying loads. Thus, they began to domesticate animals like cows, goats and sheep. Do you know, dog was the first animal to be tamed by early man? Rafts Rafts were perhaps the first means of transport discovered by the early humans. The early humans observed logs of wood floating on water. This made them realize that they could also cross rivers with the help of logs of wood tied together. So, they tied the logs together and made rafts. Soon, they started using rafts to carry loads across rivers. Invention of Wheel The early humans also observed that raft could also be used on land as a sledge. These sledges proved to be quite comfortable on even land. However, they required a lot of effort on uneven land. They noticed that round pieces of wood rolled easily down a slope. They added these round pieces of wood to their sledges. Finally, they invented the wheel. This was one of the most remarkable inventions of the early humans. Their lives became comfortable. Now, they could not only travel to far-off places, but also carry heavy loads on carts. They began using the wheel for other purposes as well. It was used to make pottery from clay. These pots were used for cooking and storing grains. The wheel used for pottery was known as the potter's wheel. Discovery of metals was another big leap towards progress. Humans continued to make progress and make their lives comfortable and happy.